Good morning, everyone. And uh, today, give me just a second here while we wait for a few together. I want to take care of some. Always good to be live and make sure the world knows it really is live. Amen. Well, good morning. I'm going to ask a few of you if you just give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you can hear me right now. That would be perfect. We're just going to wait a second there. Hopefully uh, all is well. So we'll get going here. Uh, Sister Tisha gave me a thumbs up. I assume that means you can hear me. It's good to see you all. The Danny Perry family. Of course, Tisha... Uh, hopefully some of you have seen uh, a fundraiser that Sister Tisha has organized, and we're thankful for that. Appreciate that. Uh, it's good to see you again, Doc. Good to see you on here. Stewart's good stuff. Good to have you all here. I'm just going to pause for a minute, make sure. Last, uh, yesterday we had some technical difficulties, believing today is going to be perfecto. Amen. Well, good to have you all here, and I'm going to get going um, with what I feel to share today, and it may be just uh, a little bit different, a little, a little different pace than what we have been doing this week, but uh, nonetheless, in light of um, all that is happening in our world, you might have noticed we've, we've been talking a little bit, kind of... The theme's been the fruit of the Spirit, and uh, this morning I want to talk about long-suffering, the, the fruit of being long-suffering, and uh, we'll get to that in just a minute, but I was thinking this morning, woke up early, uh, we have a very, very big day coming in our family, uh, my daughter getting married, and we're excited about that, and Part of those festivities is she has requested gumbo for one of the meals. Um, don't worry, not at the actual wedding, but uh, it's it's for a substantial amount of people. And in this house, my mother-in-law taught me how to make gumbo. She is from Louisiana. It is the real deal. And uh, we so much enjoy uh, our gumbo. But with that said, um, I was thinking about what we needed to share today and the process of making gumbo. The secret to gumbo, in case you are not aware, maybe you're not a cook, maybe you're not, well, I'm not really a cook, but maybe you've never been down that road. The secret is in the roux. Uh, I have the instructions from my mother-in-law and perhaps she'll watch this, but uh, uh, to this day, I have to always remember and read the directions, but it just simply says, be patient with this. Don't rush the process. It, the secret is in the roux. And uh, if you know anything about making it, you know that is true. You, you cannot rush that process. And um, I'm telling you, Liz, good to see you. I'm just giving my great cooking experience, talking about what an awesome gumbo maker I am. But I probably won't be entering any competition soon. But uh, so the word today that I want us to focus on the short devotion, and if you're just tuning in, these are devotions that we are doing with our church family and anyone else who wants to join every Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. We're doing this for the next week or so and uh, looking forward to uh, just great things with our church family. We've been doing 21 days of prayer and fasting, and this is just part of that experience. So today we're going to talk about Long suffering, being long suffering, and um, it's it's an interesting word in this that long suffering really is being patient. Um, patience, the patience is the ability when you look at it scripturally to take a great deal of punishment from evil people or circumstances without losing one's temper without becoming irritated and angry, without taking vengeance. It also includes the capacity to bear pain or trials without complaint. The ability to, ability to abstain severe 
uh, baiting and the, the self-control which keeps one from acting rashly even though suffering opposition or adversity. I had to read all that. All I can say is, wow, I'm not sure I am as patient as I thought I was. And perhaps you feel the same way after hearing that description of what patience really is. There's a Hebrew, Hebrew expression for patience, and it's related to the verb to be long, to be long. And it has to do with the idea of being long to, to get riled up, to be slow, to get angry. And then there's, there's two Greek words that I found that are translated by uh, some King James Version translators uh, with the word patience. One of those word is, words is the idea of remaining firm under tests and trials, or better translated as endurance or steadfastness. The other Greek words related to the Hebrew meaning, and it refers to patience as long-spirited. So you can see the connection, long-suffering, long-spirited, or, or calmness of spirit, even when under severe frustration, aggravation, uh, not to lose one's temper. The greatest biblical illustration of patience is the operation that we find in God himself. There are several passages that speak of him as being slow to anger, slow to anger. Uh, I saw my cousin Tracy just logged on here and is viewing, and if you're still watching Tracy, all I can say is there's no steamroller when it comes to God, and that's just for you, and uh, I'm sure some of the family knows what we're talking about, but, but God is slow to anger. Um, when you look at the scripture and you look at God and how he dealt with the children of Israel, how he dealt with the rebellion and how he dealt with their provocation of him, God is contrasted as one who is forgiving. He is gracious. Can I get an amen? He is compassionate. He is slow to anger. He's abounding in loving kindness. Read Nehemiah. 9 verse 17. The psalmist David declares in <clears throat> multiple <clears throat> verses, but in Psalm 86 15, Thou, O Lord, art a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. That's the God that we serve. In the New Testament, the New Testament very much stresses the patience of God. It deals with His patience, the ap uh, his, his kindness, um, His patience that led people to repentance. It is an attribute of God that we can see throughout Scripture how patient He was. Look, look at the children of Israel and, and their departure from Egypt and all the plagues that God sent to Pharaoh. God could have just sent the death angel from day one, but, but he was being patient. I would say even we could throw in this word long-suffering. Um, probably the greatest, the greatest New Testament reference to God's patience is found in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. And um, the delay in Christ's, res in, in, in Christ's return, the delay in our God coming back, it's not an indication of his slowness to respond or a slowness on God's part, Peter says. He says, but, but it's his long-suffering, not being willing that any should perish. That is the patience of our God. So if patience then is an attribute of our God, on this Friday morning, we say we are Christians. We say we are Christians, and to be a Christian means to be Christ-like. Then patience should be part of our life. Patience should be an attribute of us and who we are. And I fear so often this guy fails in that area, as I am sure many of you uh, are saying the same. And uh, when you read Paul's prayer for the Colossians, and you read in Colossians 1.11, or just read that whole chapter, you find that the Colossians, that they, they might demonstrate this quality. Uh, that's what Paul is praying for. 
Um, in Galatians chapter 5, it's one of the fruits of the Spirit as we started out with. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, it is an attribute of love. Patience is an attribute of love. Who is love? God is love, but it is an attribute of love. Do you, do you say that you love someone, but you have no patience with them? I, I would say you need to check your loveometer and uh, see how far that is really going up because that is our God. He is a God of patience. And uh, if you are truly loving, there's going to be patience involved there. If we're not, well, scripturally, I believe, we'll be treated as a slave. You can uh, hear the parable Jesus told about that. The slave pleaded with, the Lord, with his Lord. To, to the one that he owed a great amount to. He pleaded for patience, promising that he would pay it all. Promising that he would pay it all. And the Lord, his Lord was patient. His Lord forgave all the debt until he found out that the slave refused to show the same patience to a fellow servant who owed him a very, very small amount in comparison. Read Matthew 18, that parable. We as Christians, we've got to be patient. We've got to be patient. Yes, Tisha, you've got to be patient. Amen. Farmers wait patiently for their crop. James 5, 7. Abraham waited patiently for God's promise to give him the land of Canaan to be fulfilled and died without seeing that promise why? He was still believing. He just lost his, lost his patience. Hit the rock. And finally, I would say that all of us as Christians, we're commanded to be long-suffering until the coming of the Lord. Read James 5, verse 7. We've got to be long-suffering, church. And all that's happening in our world, I want to challenge you. Don't get online. Don't spout craziness. Don't get online and act like you know it all and that you think it should be this way and just say it needs to happen now. Don't be impatient with those that you love. Don't lose your anger with those that you care for. Let's pray for some long suffering to be birthed in the church all over again. Let's pray for patience in each and every one of our lives each and every one of us that call ourselves a God follower, a Christian, a saint of God, a child of God, a man of God, a woman of God. I want to be Christ-like, and I want to be patient. Amen. Would you join me? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you, God, for another day. I thank you, Lord, for Friday. I thank God that you have got us through another week, Lord. And throughout this week, I am confident, like myself, many have lost patience. Many have lost their cool, so to speak. But I pray today, God, on, on this Friday, that you, Lord God, would come into our lives in a mighty, powerful way. That your spirit, you, Lord, our love, God, and that love flow through us, Lord. And we pray, Lord Jesus, today that you give us patience. You help us to be long-suffering. We pray in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. We love you all a little bit longer today, but a little more meat on our Friday to get you through the next two days. We will not be back until 10 a.m. on Monday. We only do this Monday through Friday. And also just remember tonight, Zoom uh, prayer meeting. Those of you that want to be part of that, uh, we will send you the code to log in if you have not. Uh, Pastor Stewart, if you are on here, I saw your message and a few others. We will get that to you shortly. But uh, we'd love to have you join us. If you don't have a home church, join us for those uh, prayer times. And we'll see you all Monday morning. Amen. God bless. Have a great, 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 great weekend. Amen.